Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Cisco and Mike. This is Cisco. And this is Mike. And today's guest, he's uh, recognized as one of the best spiritual mediums in the country. He's been on practically every radio show and every TV show. You can find him on uh, with Big Boy, J. Cruz, BuzzFeed Unsolved, and a bunch of other things. AJ Barra, thank you for coming. Hey, Welcome you, to the show. Hey, thank Welcome. you, guys. Thank yeah. you. It's a pleasure. So I know we had to... Uh, bring you out here on a Sunday and, and it's a little inconvenient, but <laughs> that, we really appreciate you. <laughs> no, it works out. Honestly, oh, Sundays are, are the easiest days. It's kind of like my days to relax. So honestly, I'm relaxed with two, two good friends here today. So yeah, nice. thank, thank you. Yeah, that's my fault though, because <laughs> we do Sundays guys. Cause I live the furthest. Oh. Yeah. So, so these guys just wake up a lot of bed and come here. I gotta drive an hour and a half hour. Sometimes. Hey, I'm like five minutes away from oh, here. So, so. <laughs> it works out. You, you just gotta move closer this yes, way. See, find me a house, a four bedroom house for three hundred and seventy five thousand. I'll move back. Right. Yeah. Good luck. For, right. Forget that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Um, today we're gonna talk about different things. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure Cisco's gonna bring something up that. That happened this week, and uh, we'll discuss that later. But we want to say again, thank you, and well, uh, let's let's go. Let's. We're, 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 I'm, I'm kind of nervous on this one. I'll be honest. <laughs> this is normal. <laughs> the reason I'm nervous is because uh, we know what you do. You're a medium, right? And how long have you been doing? Oh, oh not not doing because you don't do it. I think you kind of. Were, yeah. You're born with it, right? Well, you know, I, you know, I think we all are born with an ability to recognize intuition. We're all intuitive. You know, we're not all mediums. We're not all quote unquote psychic. So intuition is that gut feeling where you have that feeling or you have that little hunch where, oh my God, I shouldn't have taken that turn or I shouldn't have taken that job or I shouldn't have done that. That's part of intuition. So the more that we recognize that, I started recognizing my ability when I was um, probably in, you know, when I was maybe 10 11 years old, um, I never had a near-death experience. I never, you know, saw spirit. I never had, like, these weird paranormal things, a near-death experience that caused me to have this ability. It was more so curiosity than anything else. I loved watching television shows like The Unsolved, uh, Twilight Zone, uh, I Dream a Genie, Bewitched, like, all this weird stuff. And my parents thought, like, you know, like, he's, you know, a little out there. Like, he's a little weird. And I grew up devout Catholic, my whole family, like, you know, my grandparents, so on and so forth. So for them, it was a little taboo what I was going into. So I think for me, it was just more so curiosity than anything else that kind of triggered me to kind of come into this work and recognize it because, again, it's an ability. I don't really consider it as a gift. Gotcha. So this is something that, like you said, you, you watched TV shows and you started noticing that you had disability. Yeah. So how much of that was influenced by your, your our heritage? Because you're, you're Mexican-American, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. How much of that was influenced from... We talked about I, it the one time. You I know. think it's like a double-edged question because, like, you know, also the stigma that comes with it mm -hmm. in a Mexican-American house, right. like in a Mexican household yep. with the whole being bad or... Well, yeah, la magia, yeah. you know, la magia blanca, yeah. magia negra. Right. But I, I remember growing up and, well, even up to this point, you know, sabiendo, like, of people that are curanderos or, yeah. Yeah. or healers, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Healers. I, I have... I told you I have, a, I have my lucky charm, um, Chayo. Yeah. yeah, she's my personal healer, and, right. and she's just like you. She yeah. she has el, el don, un don. Yeah, that she's able to communicate on both sides. And uh, again, we in our culture, it's always been brought brought down. I remember fucking listening to my parents talking about leyendas and right. and and fantasmas and. And then people that know how to talk to people, uh, fantasmas or brujas yeah. and yeah. fucking shit. So <laughs> that's what I'm saying. How much of that influence, uh, like your curiosity? Um, not really much of that side because, again, religion was a big thing with my family. My, my grandmother, you know, my mom's mom, um, you know, she, you know, bless her heart, she passed away in December, um, you that. know, and, um, you know, to have that, you know, knowledge from her to say, like, hey, if it comes from God, then I'm okay with it. Gotcha. Like, that was her thing. And, and I think my mom recognized that. My mom, like, you know, it saw it as a sense of um, nurturing the ability. You know, um, I don't think it really was from, you know, believing of honoring her loved ones or any of that stuff. Like, we weren't really talking about any of that stuff. And, again, it was more so taboo. So, for me, it was actually working with... Um, tarot cards i started working from that from sixth grade to eighth grade and started reading people around my junior high school like what i saw what i felt and so so i was i was a popular kid as i joke around with people <laughs> but i wasn't um definitely a loner definitely kind of kept to myself um definitely you know people would stay away from me because again the stigma that came associated with that weird stuff but also you know 
you grew up, you know, at least for me, I grew up watching Sally, Jesse, Raphael, Ricky Lake, Jenny Jones, all that yeah, stuff where yeah. they had psychics and mediums on television. Sylvia and, Brown. Yeah, Sylvia Brown, Sylvia like Brown, almost, yeah, all the time. Yeah. She was probably the most recognized. And then you also had James Van Prague, who, and then you had Char Mongolis and John Edward. You know, those are like some of the mecca that I see in the field that kind of opened up the doors of being the pioneers, if you will, of this work. But it was really curiosity than anything else to really gravitate me into this work and, and really honing into that ability. Cool. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's so, a lot to this. I'm no, trying, to, trying to break it down for you guys in short. I, no, like my, my, my whole thing is like, obviously, you know, like, is, is there a correlation? Because I'm not very really familiar. Like, obviously, I consider myself more spiritual right. than religious. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, that's personal issues growing up. And same thing, I came from a Catholic household. And, but do you think there's a correlation between the both? Yeah, absolutely. I, I believe if you can, blend... Can you be both? I mean, yeah, I should say. 100%. Yeah, I mean, what I do and what people consider it is a belief. Mm -hmm. So if you believe in something, mm -hmm. a higher power, a God, um, the universe, whatever you want to call it, angels, you know, spiritual guides, they're there. It's a belief. that. But if you understand religion and spirituality, they blend beautifully together. And that's not just uh, uh, Catholicism, it's Christianity, Judaism, you know, Buddhism, all that stuff. It's very important because, uh, you know... With the Torah, you know, they mentioned there's seven different levels of heaven, and mm. they, we actually have like seven spiritual levels to evolving and growing, which is a physical level, which is where we're at. Then we have the astral, the mental, so on and so forth, that we go through these different levels to evolve. So, yeah, religion and, and spirituality do blend together, absolutely. Gotcha. Now, now I was just a camera, I was going to say, when I was younger, I, I'm always, I'll, I'll be honest, <laughs> between the both of us, he's probably more, not the skeptic, but like, he doesn't, really believe in this. When yeah. I heard we were having you, I was like, okay, fuck yeah. <laughs> um, because I've always been, I've always been interested in it. Awesome. When I was a kid, so I mean, we're about the same age. Well, yeah. we're the same age. Yeah. I was always intrigued. The only thing is I was, like, I, I, I'm going to say it, he knows, I'm a pussy when it comes to it. <laughs> like, I've always been scared. He's scared of, like, I'm the dark. Of ghosts. Yeah. Even though I've seen a lot of shit and I've, you know, and I've done, and in my life, I, 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 I kid you not, I've seen enough shit to not be scared, but it still kind of frightens me because I've gone to, like, I used to go to Barnes & Nobles. Oh, yeah. and one of the things I used to do is go to the, the occult, occult section. Yep. And I'm reading about Satan. <laughs> and they're like, hey, don't get me wrong. <laughs> no, no. I'm reading about No, 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 wait, wait. wait. But why am I reading about Satan? Why was I reading about Satan? Because... You wanted the backstory. No, I wanted to... Yeah, you want to know the backstory, but I'm not trying to do Satanism. It's more of just to be aware. Right. Mm. And it's like, okay, when they got to like the, the shit where I didn't want to read further, yeah. let's stop. You know, put it away. Then I, le I read about angels. Then I yeah. read, like I have angel cards. Yeah. You know, my my, 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 my spiritual guide, who, right. which is Chayo, um, she reads to me cards. And I tell this all the time, and he kind of doesn't really believe the shit. But I'm like, what? no, dog, like she's told me shit right. that has guided me in my life. Like there's been certain times in my life where she's, Read the angel cards, or read the, she has a different different types of cards, and I'm sure you're familiar with yeah. them. So, I've always been interested in that, and it's like I think everybody is. So, like you said, we all have an ability, an ability, yeah. Except how far do you develop it? That's Correct. that's up to you, right? Yeah. I, so. I mean, I, I teach courses um, online and in person how to develop your abilities and to watch people who have never had a paranormal experience, never had, you know, experience of their loved ones, more so people are just cur curious about the work and to watch some of my students, you know, from all over online or in person to, you know, not knowing how to read energy and sense it. And then also within six hours, they're actually talking to the people's loved ones. Oh, wow. yeah, I'll, I'll you know? So, you know, and I think for you, you know, uh, you know, um, it's a sense of like fear. You have that yeah. sense of fear, so that there's that vulnerability. So once you remove that fear and know that it comes from God, it comes from a good light, you're not going to have that fear of, of going into that, the paranormal. That's yeah. what I was going to ask yeah. you. How do you differentiate that? Yeah. How um, do you know what comes from God or what comes from light right. and what comes from dark? dark? So that's a great question. You know, so m my belief is, like, in where I work from, everything that I do comes from God, comes from good light. Gotcha. I pay that respect. I pray. I do the uh, meditation. I do the Our Father before I start my day. And that's just a habit, you know. For, so for me, even when I'm not working with clients, even today, like before I get out of bed, I'm laying in my bed and I do a prayer and I meditate and I just kind of receive to the God and thank them for allowing me to be here. So for you, whatever your prayer or your belief is, if that's like opening up your chakras or grounding or, you know, people, you know, get the misconception of meditation. People think mm -hmm. meditation is sitting on the floor and saying, oh, you know, yeah, no, no. meditation could be 
you know, cutting your grass or, you know, playing music, that's a form of meditation because it takes your mind elsewhere. You're in the zone. And, yeah. And, and that's what we got to look at. You know, gotcha. you, you, you remind me a lot of my friend. Uh, he's a comedian. I don't know if Don Hef, if you know Don Hefty, he's a comedian. Don he, we do Don shows together. <laughs> yeah, you know what Don Hefty yeah. is? Yeah. You remind me a lot about him. Like he's fearful, <laughs> like with the work, but he was like into the paranormal, but he's very fearful. And I think you have a lot of similarities with kind of like going into the paranormal. And I think you got to like respect it and knowing. Well, again, I definitely that, respect yeah. it. I'm the type that, I'll, I'll tell you what, um, I believe in, in, in paranormal. I believe in, in the occult to the extent where I believe dolls have souls. Oh, absolutely. Like, that's 100%. me. Well, I don't necessarily think souls, but they have like transference of. Well, whatever. Essence whatever or whatever it is. it is. Yeah. I'm the type that goes in and like my growing up, I only had one sister. And my mom used to buy all kinds of dolls that she didn't really play with because my, my sister, my sister turned out to be gay. Okay. So she wasn't really into dolls. Okay. But my my sister had a bunch of dolls because my mom was her only daughter, and we would walk into a room and there was a bunch of fucking dolls. Sometimes, you know, as brothers, you play with them and, and oh, boom, you kick them like if they were action heroes. Right. <laughs> Every time I did that, I shit you not, I would say, thank you for allowing me to play with you. It was just to play. Please do not come up at night, and if you do, please do not scare me. Right. I respect you. <laughs> no, and I'm serious. Like, right. I ain't trying to be funny. Like my shit, fucking. I would be like, very respectful, you know. Yeah. Uh, because right. I know that if you don't respect it, it yeah. can. And so, that's, again, this is me. I agree. No, but I agree with you. You have to respect. Like, I'm, I'm gonna clear some comments up. When he says skeptic, I just don't know what to believe, because a lot of things have happened to me that I can't explain. That it's not logical and things happen, right? Right. But it's like, do I want to relate this to religion? Do I want to relate this to spiritual? Do I want to relate it to, like, paranormal? So I just don't know where to take an avenue. And I've told them, like, the more fear you show, the worse it is. I feel yeah. like you attract more energy. Yeah. I'm a big believer in the energy scope and, like, that realm. Uh, yeah, go, go ahead. No, no I, yeah. I agree with you, but I think it's much more than that. I think it's it's... Because again, I don't know how to differ differentiate. Because right. I'm pretty sure that you have felt negative energy. Oh yeah, you know, you know, it's He's so about bad to sit right now. Walking in here, walking in here. Did you feel anything? No bad energy. No, okay. except for the back room. You know, when you first walk. No, I'm kidding, guys. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I'm kidding. I'm being serious. No, no bad energy. Nothing. No, no, okay. no it's Same? good. Same. It's good. You know, uh, but honestly, like you know, when, when we, you know, joking around when you're talking about dolls and whatnot, you know, like for me, you know, I used to rip off all the heads off all my sister's Barbies and stuff like that, and she used to get mad. And so afterwards, I ended up getting, uh, you know, contacted by a producer to do a show on like haunted dolls. It was for entertainment tonight or E or something like that for it was called the Grace Halbick Show, and she, you know, she's a pretty popular podcaster, YouTube or whatever. And they said, hey, can you do uh, a thing on dolls or histories with dolls? And I said, yeah, you know, so it's more so what we call psychometry, where you hold on to an object and you pick up the energy. And every doll that they had had a history of, like, what happened to it. And I was picking up on each history, like, one was in fire or this and that. And they were just blown away. So, again, being respectful in the process is very important. But also being grounded and protected. So if your way of being grounded and protected is, again, through prayer or meditation, that's all you need. See, that, that's, that's all you that's need. It's, it's, it's a deep belief, yeah. I'm lacking that. Yeah, just believe in your heart, believe in God, believe what you know, whatever your belief is, you're going to be protected. Because I, again, I don't know how to pray. And who you are, I think that's most yeah. more important, right? Well, you know, prayer, you know, could be, you know, again, like music. Cool. It could be music. It's what, yeah, whatever makes you happy. You know, what we call it in our, in our work is sacred space. Gotcha. So that sacred space could be your garage, could be your bedroom, could be wherever it's at, your living room. Whatever that sacred space is that you feel comfortable. You're as long as you have a connection. Mm-hmm. And you say, hey, I know that this is where I feel safe. Yeah. This is my safe place and nothing yeah. will happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do so I do stuff like that. Yeah. Well, that's like good. I'll walk around the house and obviously I'm, it's me and my wife and my kids. And I'm still, like I said, I'm a pussy when it comes to shit like that. <laughs> so sometimes I'll get up in the middle of the night and it's like three in the morning. You know, I, you, you get that fucking thing where your mom tells you. The paranormal uh, hour? At three in the, the morning. Hour or whatever. <laughs> yeah. The fucking, you're going to hear knocks and la chingada. <laughs> And so you get up, and sometimes you're like, oh, fuck. It's 3 in the morning. Right. And you're like, wait, this is your house. Yeah. Get up. You have a responsibility not only to yourself, but to your kids and your wife yeah. to be to protect it. Yeah. Because it might not be paranormal. It could be a fucking actual human being 
that's trying to sneak in, oh, yeah. and you need to protect it. So you're right. The fear kind of goes away. It's kind of like, oh my god, dude, yeah. this is my fucking place. You're yeah, not gonna you, come into my fucking place. Even now, like even now, the way things are with you know society and neighborhoods and break-ins, robberies, people breaking into cars. I mean, you know, just you know, obviously living in San Gabriel Valley for many years. Yes, I moved around, but you know, you know, you see the fear of all that stuff. And you know, there was a couple years ago that. You know, um, I still had my dog at the time before um, she passed away. And um, my wife wakes me up and she goes like, hey, someone's in the house. And I'm listening and I have hardwood floors. It sounds like someone's walking. So I grab my defense and um, I go in there, listen. I'm like, oh, sh oh, shit, someone's in the house. Dog's not barking. It's like, I'm like, oh, I'm like, she she's not attacking. So I go in there and walk to the house, clear it. No one's in the house. It was an energy, a ghost, something that was there. So again, sometimes stuff like that, it freaks me out knowing that, again, is it human or is it spirit? So gotcha. again, you know, you have to clear your home, like, you know, how we do, like, you know, if people believe in limp uh, limpias, you know, when you do mm -hmm. your cleansings and so on mm -hmm. and so forth, you want to do that in your home if it's lighting Palo Santo or lighting sage or so on and so forth. When you do that, you're just clearing the energy. And I recommend everyone to do that, even if it's your work environment, like, so for your place you want to clear it out if there's like a lot of anger a lot of toxicity you know co-workers not getting along you want to clear your office or that energy just to kind of like clear the energy gotcha. for sure yeah doesn't uh you brought up a couple of things isn't one of those actually like the opposite doesn't it bring more energy sage oh sage, sage. okay um sage is something that you want to use either on yourself you know mo mostly on yourself i i don't like sage and no it's just my preference because of um I get allergic to it. Sometimes I have itchy eyes and some people have a reaction to it, but it also doesn't smell the greatest either. It smells <laughs> like marijuana being burned, to be quite honest. Some of you, some of you guys might like it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, hold on, hold on. Well, sound, sound guy's about to go and, and fucking light it up. He's like, right. oh shit, it's smells like marijuana? Blood, honestly, it does. <laughs> but Palo Santo is just, uh, it's like sacred wood. You know, um, there are companies that uh, will uh, sell it when it falls on the ground rather than knocking down the tree. So they kind of like repurpose it. But it's basically a, a piece of wood and you just slide it to clear the energy and it actually smells great. But I prefer doing that because I work from my home office and I do nothing but Zoom readings, you know, virtually. So, you know, I clear that space because I wanted to keep it sacred and keep the energy calm. And, yeah. you know, with with anything in general, and, it, you know, you can have too much of good energy. It's like someone who loves chocolate. But if you eat too much chocolate, you yeah. get sick of it. Sometimes you have to get rid of the good energy at the same time. Hmm. Gotcha. So you say you work from home and sometimes you hear things. Is there a non off switch? Yes. Like, is, yeah. is, is, is that like a thing? 100%. Okay. 100%. So my on and off switch is uh, meditation prayer. But it works differently. So when I turn myself, you know, on, I know that sounds weird, but <laughs> <laughs> I know, like, when I work, just go, I'm out like, oh, shit. Um, but literally, when I turn on my ability, if you will, um, it's through meditation and prayer. So I go through my chakras, I open up, ground myself, protect myself, see holy, you know, light or white light around me, protecting me, coming down. And I just ask God, divine, and the energy to help me convey the messages for this individual. So if it's doing a private reading or doing my live in-person events, which I just got back to in January, which I'm happy to do after two years, two and a half years. And, you know, it, it's it's the same same ritual. And, you know, I never know what's going to happen, you know, because people come to me for either intuitive guidance, that could be career, life, health, relationships, all that stuff, or they're looking for mediumship, which is connected with loved ones and so on and so forth. But when I do this work, I never guarantee it. And no medium or psychic should never guarantee anyone that, oh, I can definitely bring through your mom, your that specific loved one, because it, it, it's it's that's not how it works. It's not like picking up a phone and saying, hey, you know, like, I want my mom here. I want so-and-so. It doesn't happen that way. You got to gotcha. let things happen organically. And so that on and off switch is so important. You, it's like leaving a battery on. You know what I mean? You leave the battery on for so long, it's eventually going to get drained. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there has to be that. So once I'm done working with clients, or once I'm done working, you know, with a workshop, whatever I'm doing spiritually, mediumistically, intuitively, I turn off and cool. I turn on. That's cool. You uh, you mentioned you were married, right? Yeah. How long have you been married? Oh my God, eight years. Okay. Eight years, but I've known my wife for sixteen years. Cool. Sixteen years. Congrats yeah. on that. Yeah, thank you. Um, my question is. <laughs> Something's coming because okay. I could tell by the yeah, way you yeah, set that okay. up. Oh no, I just want to know because I, I don't think I would be able to marry uh, marry a uh, medium because like I said, like, like I said, I'm a fucking pussy. So if my wife told me, hey, you know what, I see things and read things, and I'll, I'll just fucking pass out. But when you when you when you met your wife, did she know the your gift? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. She uh, she she um, 
is a publicist. So that's how we met. She mm -hmm. actually started doing some work for me. And, uh, you know, we ended up uh, just kind of like meeting with each other for like nine months. We were both out of like bad, toxic relationships. So we weren't even planning to, you know, hook up or hang out or it was just merely work. And so um, we started working with each other for nine months. I think afterwards, you know, we started just hanging out and started to know each other on a, on a personal level rather than a work mode. And um, she wasn't a big believer in this work either. I mean, yes, she represented me, but it wasn't like, oh, yeah, I believe in this stuff. I think when you have your own personal experience, and that goes for anyone who's skeptical, not cynical, but skeptical. Anyone who's skeptical that has an experience can say, like, okay, maybe there's something more out there. Maybe there's something out there. And I think that was her experience by watching my work and seeing my work for so long. It's just kind of like she's so used to it. She's like, oh, you know, this and that. But she wasn't fearful. I think it was more so understanding um, the process. Because cool. most people don't understand how the process works. They, they, they see things on television, and a lot of that stuff is edited down and this and that. So they think it just happens right in that moment. Same thing with paranormal shows. Uh, when you do an investigation, it's like six, eight hours or even longer. And you may only get like one piece of evidence within those five hours. You know? gotcha. So yeah, again, a lot of that, when you see stuff on television, sometimes, again, it's just personal experience you have to have. Cool. Man, that's crazy. Imagine like having a partner like that right from the beginning. Uh, she's got good energy. I'm good. <laughs> oh, I'm staying away. This is toxic already. <laughs> I'm not even going to get into it. <laughs> it's so funny because, like, for, for the longest time, even to this day, like, I will, um, you know, know where she's at or what she's doing. And this and this is, like, no, not nothing of tracking and this and that. And she, for a while, she goes, like, oh, are you here and here? And she also, like, eat this. And she goes, like, so are, are you watching me? She, like, she would freak out all Who the time. Who needs a GPS? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> There's moments that we already know what we're thinking, and, and I think obviously because of the time that we spent, but there's moments that we don't even have to talk to each other. It's just kind of like we get it. Like we can give each other a look, and we understand the message or we understand gotcha. what we're talking about. And there could be moments where I'm out at events or with a group of people, and I give her a look, and she's kind of like – it's like she knows what that means, that look. And it's like – so a lot of that is just really having that balance with that significant other, and that significant other you know, will take time with any relationship. So a lot of it is just balance. Has you picked up any, anything – from your end, like any of your abilities? Or has oh, she... absolutely. She's pretty damn intuitive. She's okay. intuitive herself. I mean, all women are. It's a very sensitive thing. Most women are very sensitive. But, you know, I always joke around who needs to click the CIA or FBI when you have a wife or a girlfriend, <laughs> you know what I mean? Honestly, because they know everything, what you're doing, what you're at. This yeah. So there's nothing that you can really do or get away with. It's just like really just, again, having that balance and being honest with that individual. Because, like, if you're trying to hide something, I always joke around with people, especially with an intuitive or psychic. Um, you're in the wrong room because that information may be talked about in public or in a private reading. So, again, I think the more that you vibrate and hang out with that, in I don't know if you want me to stop. Cool. So, I don't know. So, I don't know sometimes yeah. without any purposes, I mean, they always say, like, oh, stop. But, yeah. but um, here's the thing with, with the work is that the more that you vibrate with certain people with your vibration, you vibrate with them. The, the people that you vibrate that bring you down, you're going to bring that energy with you. So, with my wife, it was just more so we – vibrated great together and we keep that energy going and she's completely opposite from me she's uh caucasian blonde hair uh green eyes yeah she uh is very outgoing i'm very calm very observant so complete opposite but it works it's balanced and you know when we do our our shows or events together people laugh because like again we're complete opposite but yeah. but it works nice <laughs> so you were talking about uh different energies different vibrations with different people has that affected uh your personal relationships with friends, family, and things of that nature? Because I mean, question. yeah, that's a good question. Um, yes and no. I mean, I don't read for like family or friends because it's like, to me, I see it as taboo. Like, I don't, I don't want to know their drama, their history, their stuff like that. And I have friends, you know, that have been around me for years that have never asked me for reading or never this and that, or people that I that I meet like that I become friends and they say, hey. Uh, can you do a reading? And sometimes it happens, and sometimes it just happens organically. There was my friend that I've had for that I have still have. Um, I think it's over 16 years. I think it's like 18 years now, and uh, she's never asked me for a reading. And it happened one night. She was over at the house. We were hanging out the you know the backyard, and we're all talking. We we're barbecuing. We had some friends over, and I never read for her. She never talked about her family history, like loved ones who passed over. And all of a sudden, I just started channeling messages from her loved ones and that's all she wanted over the like not over the years but it was like that beautiful moment for, even for me i was like 
wow, I did not know that about this person. I had no idea she lost this individual or that individual. So for me, when it does happen organically, I believe it's part of God and synchronicity when that individual is ready to hear those messages. And, and, and that's, that's my firm belief. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. Closure. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know. When they're ready. Yeah, yeah. because, you know, in, in ways like closure is like a, a, I like to use it very loosely. The reason why is that, you know, in some ways we, we want that closure. But at the same time, closure is like you're ending something. But we don't want to end that relationship with us, with that spirit, with that loved one. So what we want is that healing. We want to evolve. We want to grow. So when we get that closure, we don't want to, it's closure in a sense, loosely, but it's a healing that we want so we can evolve physically because our loved ones, a lot of people think like, are they sad? Are they upset? Do they see what's happening in our lives? And absolutely, but they're not upset. They're not worried about us because they're always around us, not 24 seven. We miss them because we don't physically have them. We have them spiritually, but physically, it's that connection that we're yearning. It's that physical touch, that connection. So it's just, again, really focusing on really having that healing that you need in your own personal life. If it's like in your heart, your mind, body, and soul. Gotcha. Yeah. Man, that was deep. I know. <laughs> like it kind of hits because it's something that I've talked about. I feel the way we live forever, the way we're eternal is through memories and through carrying that person with us. Right. No matter what. So a lot of times, you know, people say, oh, I want to live eternal. But technically, we, we, we are through stories. Yeah through memories and things like that so 100 percent. you know i think that's the best thing we can do to honor our loved ones is keeping that vibration alive it's keeping them alive it's through stories memories videos whatever it is like i think if we have that it's something that we hold on to as just a memory and it's also those those moments that we can go back to that made you laugh or that made you angry or that made you like, oh, this is so stupid. I can't believe we did this. Like there's moments like that, that we can hold on to, that we can continue to keep that relationship going regardless of the past a year ago or 20 years ago. There's no time frame on the other side. I think that's a misconception a lot of people have. Like, is there a time that we can talk to our loved ones? No, they could have passed immediately and they can come through within an hour, a couple minutes. When they do that, most of the time, they're just letting us know in the physical realm they're with us. They're okay. They made it safe. They're with God or they're with, you know, spirit or they're on the other side. Whatever your belief is, they're safe. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, I remember a story A story my mom told me once. Um, I was a baby. And I think I was maybe a year old. And there was a, one of my dad's uncles in Mexico. before they, Because I was born here. They took me very small over there. And then they brought me back. And I was about a year, year and a half. And I was barely speaking, you know, when you say words or whatever. And one of my dad's uncles in Mexico, I guess, he was really, really, like, in love with me. Like, oh, my God, his little nephew. And we were already here. I think we were living in La Puente at the time in an apartment or maybe on money. And I guess my dad came home from work. And I kept telling my mom and my dad, Tio Layo, Tio Layo, Tio Layo. That's all I could say. And they were like, oh, shit, that's my tío from, from Mexico. And within like an hour, they got a call that he had passed that morning. Oh, wow. So I, I don't remember this, but my mom and my dad always tell me, I was like, yeah, you, you I, I think it was your uncle coming to say bye to you because yeah. he was really like in love with you like as a, as a kid. I was like, holy shit. Don't they say that also like children are like the most open to and receptive to things like that? Oh, 100%. You know, um, you know, it, with your experience, um, Mike, it's it's um, it's a sense of like recognizing those moments, even for your parents to recognize that in a very beautiful way, because you have to see that as being sensitive. And to mm -hmm. go to your question, Cisco, um, it's, it's being very sensitive to that vibration, being, you know, intuitive or whatever you want to call it. Sensitive is a word. And as a child, you're like a magnet. You pick up so much energy. So usually around like maybe, at least for my experience between, 13, I would say probably between 13 and 15 years old, you start losing that sense of um, perception of energy and vibration and belief starts to change that, oh my God, there's not actually like, I don't want to say if kids, I don't think kids listen to it like, no. a, like a Santa Claus or an Easter bunny or so on and so forth. You were taught to believe in that. So in some sense, you're not taught to believe in, in spirits, if you will. You're taught to recognize what you see, what you sense, what you dream of. And that was a personal experience that no one can take away from. Gotcha. No one can take that experience away. And that was your uncle's way of recognizing that. For kids having these abilities, kids are very sensitive. They call them crystal children, indigo children. So I always tell parents to embrace it 
embrace their ability. You know, you don't think it comes from negativity. Don't feel like it comes from, you know, of, of a demon or the devil, which again, a lot of people will have that belief or that perception. But I can, I think the more that we recognize the truth or our own truth, we start to recognize how we're all vibrate together, how we're all intuitive and it's a normal thing. Don't worry about Sangai. Sangai is just giving me a, he's giving me a signal. Oh. <laughs> All right. He just gives me signals. Yeah. Um, damn. I lost my train of thought right there, but I had a really No, no, no. I mean, what he said about the ball, about kids being uh, more susceptible and, and embracing it. And I, and I feel you because, like with my son right now, he's going to be turning seven. And he still thinks, he still believes in Santa Claus and the yeah. tooth fairy. And a couple of kids, you know, nowadays, a couple of kids in school were like, you still believe in Santa mm. Claus? Right. And I'm just like, I know it kind of, it's kind of stupid for us now as adults, but in the sense, it's like, like I always told my wife, you could tell how innocent a kid is. Yeah. And that's when I think, well, that's what you were talking about, yeah. about when you lose your innocence, is mm -hmm. when you start losing that whole perception. ability or perception or, yeah. a, uh, and it sucks because nobody wants to lose that. Everybody wants to live in a, in a magical state. Yeah. Like, 100%. I remember, I remember fuck being 12, 13, bro. And I've never said this shit, fuckers, but <laughs> um, growing up the way I grew up, you know, obviously, we, me and Cisco know that I didn't have that much of a great life growing up. I had a okay. fucked up life. And one of my escape rooms was Boy Meets World. <laughs> no, 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 I, I love that show, too. Yeah. <laughs> Boy Meets World. Like, I could sit there, watch it. Topanga. Yeah, Topanga. Oh, I was in love with Topanga. Who <laughs> was it, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I would, I would imagine, you know, it, it's obviously Disney, and it's fucking the perfect life. But I would transition my mind into Corey. Mm. And no matter how much trouble he got in or situation, they always solved it. Yeah. The family came together, and it was what I was lacking in my real life. That it was like, holy shit, I connect to that. Right. And 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 even now, Boy Meets World, I, I connect to it back because it reminds me of, okay, this is when you were probably at, at your youngest suffering. Right. And But this is where you were more at peace and spiritually connected to, to something. And again, it's not even a spiritual show. Right. It's not like, uh, what it was, was it, seven? Your, your meditation but space. Was about, exactly. I was just going to say that. I, I, I was, I was, that that's, that's what tripped me out because he says it doesn't necessarily have to be praying. It's whatever makes your mind calmest. Yep. And to, to this day, I sit there and, and I watch. I, I could go over all episodes of Boy Meets World because it takes me to a place where I am the most calmest, even in the darkest of scenarios that I grew up in. You know what I mean? Right. So that's what he was talking about, the, the whole, when you lost your time. He was talking about kids, the, how they lose their... Uh, innocence. In, innocence. Yeah. yeah. So... Well, you know, with you as well, I mean, there has to be that ability to recognize the toxicity because, you know, you're still possibly carrying that deep down in, in your root chakra or your yeah. heart chakra that you need to let go of things that no longer serve you. And I think that's the difficult part for you because you're, you, you feel like because that made you so happy that if you let go of that, you're not going to continue to have that vibration. So you're right. So once you let go of that toxicity, that trauma, the suppressed feelings, you're going to be like, and I have chills. I don't know if you can see <laughs> it's, it's, it's chills of recognition, like saying like, shit, man, like I can finally move forward. I can, I can finally be happy of just being who I am. And that's what we talk about living in that true authentic moment, because you're going to start to recognize you being you. And you know, you may have thought that your life started at 30 years old of, say, getting kids and getting married and having a home or whatever it is, but your life is starting, I think, probably now or, or moving the next couple of months. Like, you're going to start recognizing that moment of saying, like, I really don't need to rely on an intuitive, a healer, this and that. You may go to them for guidance, which people come to me for guidance, but they don't rely on me for that. I think you're going to recognize this as moving forward that, you're gonna let go of that suppressed energy and recognize your truth and say, "Fuck, this is where I'm at." <laughs> you know what's fucking funny? That I, I don't, I haven't gone to her in a couple months. I, we, we still chat, but every now and then I'm like, "Hey, Charlie, I need you now." I fucking, <laughs> it could be whatever time of the night. Yep. And she's a cool homie. I met her when we were at that, uh, uh, at the county, and she would tell me shit, and and I'm like, and she was like, "Yeah, homie, I, I could do this, I could do that." All right, cool. 
She'll read the cards. I think I, I, got, I think she got annoyed because I used to, she used to do them for free for me. <laughs> and I used to fucking ask her like. Every day he's yeah, asking, no, no. what's going to happen today? <laughs> hold on, hold on. I used to be like, okay. What should hey. I have for breakfast? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> it got to the point where I was like, hey, can you, can you give me a phone bill. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, Chayo, I love you, Chayo. Th- thank you, okay? I know. I you. Now I, I, give, I do give her money. I do fucking pay her because I'm like, fuck, you know, like. I thought, like, there was three readings a day sometimes. I'm like, hey, can you give me a reading for that? Can you give me a reading for this? Lunch, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> so, anyways, where was I going with this? No, I was, I was saying, now I have conversations with her. And I'll be like, hey, Chayo, this, this, and that. And I'm telling her what she's going to tell me. Right. And she goes, see, you got this, homie. Yeah. Like you said, you don't need... I don't need her as a healing, yeah. But I'm happy that I have her next to me, yeah. As a as a friend, because like she tells me, she said, "You got it." So why the fuck are you talking to me? It's it's reassurance for you, and I don't want to get too personal, but I'm very honest and blunt vibrationally when I pick up energy. But you know, you were never validated when you were younger. You were never recognized as this is what I accomplish. I you never were recognized as like this is what I can be. So you were always kind of put in this box in a sense of saying like, <laughs> this is you. And I think now again, at a point in your life that it's a validation that you get from your intuitive. It's that reinsurance, yeah. which you don't need anymore. You can have that relationship, that friendship. This is hard though. It's, it, it's, it's, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, no it, it's a moment that you're going to, again, you're going to recognize. And I feel like within a couple months, like why this end of this year, I feel like it's going to be that moment for you to evolve and be the person that, you truly are. And I think you know that it's there. You know the potential. It's like it's like um, a, a, a symbolism or symbol that I would that, that I'm seeing. It's like, you know, um, where they would dangle a carrot in front of a horse and make the, you know, the horse walk to water, if you will. But I feel like that your guides or angels are working with you. You know that, but they can't do the work for you. You got to do the work. It, it's <laughs> funny you said that because it's something I've told them oh, okay. about validation. And I brought it up. I mean, as humans, we just need that, you know? Yeah. And to everyone, no matter who you yeah. are. But one thing you brought up earlier, and I'm sorry to go back, but you brought up letting go. Yeah. And a lot of people are scared of it. Yeah. Because you're going to lose those good memories. And that's, mm-hmm. that really like hits home. You know, like yeah. it really makes a lot of sense to why people can't just move on. Because there are positive things that we've gone through during those tough times. Yep. And you don't want to lose that as well. Yeah. <laughs> he's getting a little, he's a little, he's a little shocked over here. <laughs> no, I'm not shocked. Uh, I mean, Chayo said it to me too. Uh, validation, you're right. You hit it on point. Uh, I think that that affected my life throughout. You know this as, as a friend. I've told you shit, and you know my life, but he doesn't. Mm-hmm. So the fact that he brought that up, it was kind of like, okay, yeah, my dad. I mean, it's a known fact that I've always wanted to be validated by my dad. I never had that validation from my dad, and it affected me throughout my whole life. And and um. It, it affected me with relationships with, with my friends. It, relates, it affected me with relationships with my family. Right. Um, mostly with my wife, you know. Um, and now I'm like, fuck that. I don't give a fuck if my dad validates me or not. I'm going to validate myself. But right. I think I still haven't let go. Right. Because now I'm seeking validation, you know. In other ways. In other ways. And I, I want to ask you, and I don't want to get too personal, but when you talk about your father, is it because he wasn't physically there to validate you no he was there okay so it means that there wasn't that physical connection or that emotional connection that was there exactly so that is again more of that vibration energetically that we work with the heart chakra and and again you can look into you know we all have chakras we all have energy points in our hands which is why some people do reiki and this and that and you know so i think it's really recognizing the the trauma again the things that don't no longer serve you and i think it's more energetically than anything else I think mentally sometimes we, we play this hamster wheel effect where we play things over and over again. And I think for you, it's about, again, detaching from that. It's easier said than done. Like when we say, oh, it's okay to move on. Like sometimes we need to hear certain things. And especially if it comes from someone that doesn't know you, doesn't know your past, your history, it kind of like does like, holy crap. Like it kind of makes you understand like where you're going and what you're going to leave behind. And I think for you, you're going to leave a lot of this toxicity probably by tomorrow. Or you're going to wake up tomorrow feeling differently and saying that. I got to do me. And that's that's what I want for my client. That's what I want for an individual friend. So for you, really, really kind of focus on, on your needs and 
not needing that validation, you know, as much as like we all want it. But I think for you, it's being, it's being validated through love and you're very guarded when it comes down to your heart because you're afraid like, what's your motive? What do they want? Are they going to abandon me? So once you remove those emotions, you're going to be like, okay, I can deal with this, you know? Gotcha. So, yeah. I'm sorry if I'm getting personal. Nah, getting it's good, it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, it's just like energetically, like, you know, I, I don't, look to read anyone or a host or whatever but whatever comes to energetically if i'm vibing with it or i feel their vibration or i feel spirit there's a reason why those things come through and i think it's important for people to recognize that you know because people <laughs> that you know when you sat down i don't know if it was on air or off air but you know before we started this like people are always f afraid to have me in studio or because of something like this will happen yeah. as if i might read them or, or i'm reading their mind or I'm like i don't read minds it's the energy because we all vibrate energy and the way i work actually it's more so through a person's voice so when someone talks to me sometimes i actually see color that comes out of the mouth and mm. so that color lets me know kind of where they're at it's kind of like an aura but not necessarily an aura it represents kind of like their life theme and we all have life themes so when i see you know, green energy, and ironically, there's green here. Um, green energy represents around a person or out their mouth, is that they're a person of service, a humanitarian, social worker, nurse, teacher, something of that work, something along the lines. But every color has a meaning, at least to me. It may mean something different for you. Gotcha. That's yeah. crazy. I've never heard of that one. Like yeah. the auras and all that. <laughs> no, but the way he said it about yeah. the, I don't know. I'm I'm not tripping out, bro, because like I said, I. He goes, but I am. <laughs> 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 I, 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 am, I, I do get, I do get like, uh, um, not shocked. It's not. I, I, what's the right word for it? Amazed. I am amazed. You know, because again, I, I'm a firm believer in in, in 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 this in the mediums and and energy and, right. and, and and believing in something above you. I'm not the most religious person. Obviously, I've never really. I don't really go to church. I can't pray for nothing. I mean, the only prayer I know is El, el Angel de la Guardia. And that's only because my mom used to t tell us, okay, read that, read that, read that, mm -hmm. read that, and, and I memorize it. Even as a grown-ass man, I don't know how to do Padre Nuestro. Right. So um, it, am it amazes me. It's like, okay, cool. You know, we do live in a world where, like I said, we fucking negative world. Yeah. Right. We're constantly hearing negative shit. Um, and we're going to get to that because I know that you want to you wanna get to the, the recent ne most negative things, which uh, was the overturn of Roe versus Wade. But we constantly live in a world where it's like, fuck, in living, we're negative. Right. Why do we want to be fucking negative outside of yeah. that? You know, it's like, I'm tired of being negative. I'm, I'm tired of going home, dealing with the negative shit in the world. And then I still got to deal with my negative ass. It's like, but here's that. You know what's funny? I feel like, I don't know, maybe if it's now or it's always been this way, but neg negativity is more contagious than positivity. Yeah. And it and it's... It amazes yep. me because we're so quick to catch on or jump on the negative things, but it's because it's fed through the media too. I think media. through through us as well. We just we just be, we're becoming these people that want to know something bad's happening to make it's ourselves feel better. I don't know what it it's is. Interesting. It's media, right? You don't see on the media, not medium, media. Yeah. Like yeah. you don't see on the news a lot of positive shit. People yeah. turn it off. They yeah. want ratings, so they'll go to the negative shit. And then the negativity attracts into us, and we fucking start being negative with our with our family. Absolutely. Start being negative with ourselves. And you're like, ah, fuck that. That guy didn't make this or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But little, so. little, uh, you know, and again, not to get, you know, political or PC, you know, but, you know, you have all these damn shootings, school yeah. shootings. It, it's, it's, uh, it just makes me angry because, like, now teachers have to have, um, what do you call it, like a, a safety kit, you know, like a active shooter kit and all this stuff to, you know, just in case something happens to them, you know, the kids and so on and so forth. And, you know, these people that go in and just do these mass shootings, it's just, it's everywhere. And, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe the United States has the highest massive shooting since Jan, I think since January till now, I think it's over like 200 and 266, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's Compared great. to like Germany or where, I mean like 11 a week. Yeah. It's so freaking like, bizarre and and then we we look at energy of, of negativity like i don't know if you guys are, are big on social media but like you know there's certain there's certain people that and which is why i'm not always on social media is that sometimes people post 
about their trauma, their issues, or their day, or what they're going through. I feel so angry and upset and sad and whatever. And then you have to think about that vibration, that negativity, that every time someone, you know, likes that comment and likes that, they're liking that negativity that you're putting on there. So you don't want to put your problems and your energy out there. Is that you can let someone know and let them know how you're feeling, but you don't want to like attract that because then you're building that energy into a bigger bubble. I, I have a theory on that. Yeah. Um, because I, I, I'm not that big on social media anymore. Right. Like, I'll post random shit. <laughs> and I always tell, I always say, I'm going to tell myself, all right, today I'm going to post something that's negative. That's not necessarily about me. Right. Just I'm going to post it out there. And all of a sudden, that gets the most likes. Right. Mm -hmm. And the most comments. Right. Or the most messages. And I'm like, that's fucking crazy. Yeah. And it's a test to me. I'm just <laughs> like, they'll be like, oh, honey, this, or, 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 or hey, Mike, this. I'm like, um, just to let you know, this is a, a, a fake post that I posted. Right. Congratulations, you passed the test. Right. That's all I say. Yeah. And when I say that, it's me basically saying, ha, huh, gotcha. Yeah. You know, one of those are waiting for negativity. You fucking haven't mentioned me. You haven't messaged me in six months. All of a sudden, I put something negative. Yeah, and, and, you know, uh, and, and not to kind of like step on any, uh, I guess, our, our culture or I, I think, you know, being Hispanic or Mexicans, like, you know, it's like, they don't want to see other other people succeed and evolve. It's like they don't want to help out, you know, say your friend has a small business. They don't want to help those people out. But when they see you fail, then they're right there to you to yeah. let you know, like, hey, like you failed, you done this. Well, so, I told you, dog. I told yeah, you. Exactly. So you a hard know, business. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It, 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 it's, 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 it's anything in general. Like, you know, you got to think of it like, you know, the people that support you the most would yeah. be there to support you, but sometimes they're not there to support you yeah. in the moments that you need them. So, you know, the negativity on social media or anything in general, um, you know, even for me, I don't post about my personal life on, on, on uh, social media or things of that nature. It's just not, I'm a very private person, but when I do podcasts or shows or interviews, I'm very open, but I also very private at the same time gotcha. because like we all want to keep that energy sacred. You know what yeah. I mean? So, you know, that negativity post, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Do do you like right now we're talking about negativity, things of that nature? I feel like we could do three podcasts with him. I know, right? <laughs> Let it's crazy. No, <laughs> no, yeah. It just you know, it's it's just amazing like how it's a spiritual thing, but it's also like psychology. You know what I mean? In a sense, it's about bettering each other and kind of helping each other out. So that's what's been kind of amazing. You know, that's why when you say three podcasts, and it's true because we literally had a therapy session in a non-therapy way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was, a, it was in a spiritual way, right? right. Off vibes and energy. So it's like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, again, it's all supposed to happen for, for you guys, you know, it's how the universe works and, you know, how this all works. I mean, you guys being really literally right around the corner from me, you know, your, your recording studio and. You know, I, th I think it's just vibing with people, you know, like yeah. even though you like you don't know, you know, there's times where I'm like, I really don't want to do a podcast. I really don't want to do this because as my schedule is, you know, it just Sundays are, are my days off and this just happened to work out. And so, you know what I said, like, yeah, let's set it up. Let's do it then. You know, like I'd rather just, you know, have the opportunity to do it and you know, also share with the community because, again, I don't know exactly how all the listeners are, if they're all SGV, San Gabriel Valley, if they're all over the place, you know what I mean? Because like. I was born and raised in this area. You know, I was born in Hollywood, but I mean, I was raised in San Gabriel Valley all my life. And yeah. so for me, it, it is home. You know, like I got a, 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 a shirt, no, a sweater made for me. And it says, uh, uh, I think Hacienda Heights, something along the lines, and says, this is where my story begins or something like that. So, yeah, so there's stuff like that that I kind of always like to remember my roots because regardless of how many, how many shows or things that I've done or celebrities or people that I met over the years, I'm still, still the same kid from SGV. Honestly, I'm still the same kid. Nothing, nothing has changed. Like I, you know, I am not really big on doing red carpets and this and that unless I have to go show face. But for me, I'm, I'm just again, just me. I'm just a very simple person. And you'll probably catch me out at Home Depot all the time and paint and <laughs> shirts and this and that all dirty, this and that. And people go, "Oh, can I take a photo?" I'm like, "Yeah, no, not, it's, it's not, not my, my best." Thing, right? not like this. <laughs> but you know, I'll take a photo with them still looking like crap. But it's yeah. just like it's who I am. I, I don't see that as. It's it's humbling, you know. Honestly, that's dope. it is. What what's what I'm taking away from you? It's not a vibe or anything, <laughs> but <laughs> no. But like your your demeanor, you're very calm, you're very humbled. Like doing what you do, that doesn't overwhelm you sometimes with emotions or different types of emotions. Yeah, it does. Um, one thing I've learned over the years is uh, removing myself from a person's reading because if I you know involve my own emotions into that, 
um, I could lose the meaning of the message for the client. So um, there are many moments that, not every reading is like this, but there's many moments during a reading where I'm connecting the person with that specific loved one. And, uh, you know, I can feel the emotion or I get chills and typically chills for me are, are confirmation from spirit, my guides, so on. What, I'm like I'm on the right path um, when I'm talking about for the individual. When those moments happen for me, um, again, there are, there are themes, what we call in this work. And themes are like, say, the whole day of readings or the whole week of readings are all suicide and overdoses. Or they're, the whole week is all moms that passed away or all dads or um, it's all murders, you know, so um, there are themes which is very draining mentally. And, you know, my dad, like he, he's like, so, I mean, he's a believer in, it, in the work in itself, but my dad just thinks I just sit down in front of a computer and talk to people, like literally like just like a podcast. Yeah. And I'm like, I go mentally, it's draining because like I'm working and dig, you know, trying to give specific details and information, yeah. which it, it's, it's for me, I'm not one of these fluff and stuff mediums that, oh, this is what they're saying, or that you have someone that passed with the pain in their chest. That could be anyone in your family. But if you can say, like, hey, I got blah, 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 that passed with triple bypass, and his name is XYZ, that's what we call evidence, and that's what we call an evidential medium. And that's what I work on because I strive on that. Because if I was on the opposite side of you guys to receive a reading, I would want to know that. Yeah, because so, I'd be like, what the fuck? Mean? I know that. Yeah. I don't need you to tell me that. Yeah. And I think that's what we need is recognition of knowing that, you know, the energy that we hold on to, again, I got to release that, which is why I do cleansings, why I do meditation, because it is heavy. It is heavy. And that's, that's important that you asked earlier, is that on and off switch? If I'm always on, I would be drained. I would be tired. And there are moments, honestly, that when I'm done with, like, uh, it could be, you know, my very last reading or my very first reading of the day, and I already feel, like, tired. And I'm like, oh, my God, it just took so much out of it. And I think the most difficult readings for me to do are um, parents that lost their, their child, regardless of how young or how old they are. Um, it's all it always gets me. And like, there's there's a couple of YouTube videos um, that are out there from parents losing their, their their child. And there was one more recently that I did from my event in LA or Whittier, Whittier. I think it was in January, if I'm not mistaken, or April. I can't even remember. The months are all mixed <laughs> up, but. Um, the, the sisters were there and they lost their brother. And, uh, I think it was a retaliation, not retaliation, but either mistaken identity. Um, but he, he, he was shot in the head. It did not kill him, but he was a quadriplegic, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, but he was, he was, um, in a wheelchair and he did not die from that gunshot wound, but it was a uh, kind of like a random thing. Someone, I think just wasn't expecting it. I think that's the one I, I, I was listening to just on the way here. Yeah. yeah. It's um, just. Where you asked her, you asked him, I feel something in my head, yeah. and it's very heavy. Yeah. And then she's like, "Yeah, did yeah. he die from a, uh, a gun gun blast?" And you're like, "And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I was reading that one." So yeah, yeah. it's it, it's it's heavy, and that, that's what I mean when I tell people like when when you have these themes and moments, it's 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 bringing in that balance, and we all need that balance, and I think that's so important because that energy can affect us, you know, mentally, emotionally, physically, you know, so when, when I do work, I actually do feel certain things in my body, which is what we call clairsentient, and when I feel like pain in my chest, I know the person passed with either a, a heart attack, or if it was a pressure to a certain part of my head, I know it's an impact, or I, if it's a certain part of my head, it's a stroke or aneurysm, so spirit will use my symbolism to help me understand, and, uh, you know, again, I think that's why it's draining on the physical body, too, because you're, you're interpreting, picking it up. And you have to think of it. It's like sign language. It's a it's language that I'm using that no one really understands. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing my best to convey those messages for the person. Gotcha. Mm. Yeah. Have you ever worked with police? Yeah, actually, I actually um, teach classes with uh, law enforcement. I'm the only one uh, that I know of that actually teaches courses um, for intuitives to actually work with law enforcement for missing persons and homicide. Um, I am, you know, have my certificates through law enforcement investigations and all that stuff. Um, I work with small cases, big cases, small departments, big departments from all from all over. And I get a lot of I get a lot of like not I, um, not missing persons, but um, more cases that are cold or homicide cases Unso like unsolved cold yeah. cases. Yeah. yeah, cold cases are, are, are like the biggest one. And people think cold cases are like 35 years old. That could be just a couple months that they go cold because typically within the first uh, 24 to 48 hours, you, you, you lose a lot of that information. So if there's no witnesses and things of that nature, then it makes it a little bit difficult to kind of find that. But I can only take on so many cases. And I, and I have to stress it today that, 
psychics and mediums do not solve cases. We're, we're only a tool in the tool belt or the last resort that a det detective wants to use, if they believe or not, to be quite frank, because most gotcha. of the time they don't, they're not big believers unless they had experiences or you have a good report. So, so the, the, they, they don't call you per se, like the, the DA or, or the police department and say, hey, we're going to call uh, so-and-so and we're going to sign up to this case. They're more like the, the, police, the, the police officer or the detective themselves must want to believe in that. Correct. To kind of say, but, you know what? Let me go this avenue, right? Yeah, but also, okay. too, the, um, a psychic medium won't be used in court because you, you have to kind of think, of, like, the way I kind of put it to people is that think of us as, like, a CI, citizen informant. That's all we are is that, but the detective has to recognize how did he or she get that information? Like, I, I can say, hey, I see the body here and the foot sticking up and everything, but the detective has to figure out how to get a warrant yeah. or whatever mm -hmm. or this and that you know to actually find like gotcha. he has to figure out a way you to leave the whole details yeah but your mind cannot be the evidence it can't be the um what do you call it the um i can't think of the word i want to use uh like a search warrant you gotcha. know what i mean so it, you know so yeah like i said it, it's they have to like how can i say this as a ci you're just a citizen informant so you're just operating as a witness but if you're walking uh, working as um, you know a government informant or so on and so forth you have to obey by government laws and you have to ob obey by their rules and regulations and all that stuff so you don't really want to be a, a, you know in that work as a intuitive because then you're restricted and you have to operate that way and you can't give the evidence the same way because you have to legally find ways you gotcha. know it's like you know there's a detective that, um, that I, I work with when we do these classes he always jokes around he goes one of these days i'm gonna see aj floating in a house saying oh this is like this is where it's at or this and that but I'm, like, I'm still gonna need a search warrant out to find it you know what i mean but you know he's a cool he's a he's a cool detective he's been with the department for 25 years and and uh there's another detective been with the department i think 23 years so um it, it's it's amazing to work with people and even though they're skeptical and not really big believers it's amazing to kind of see their perception open to teaching intuitives how to work with detectives and so that's something i wanted to do was literally to bridge that gap not only physically like doing my mediumship but bridge that gap with intuitives and law enforcement and so when i do it, it it's um it's been two years and I've been doing this course for about two, three years. And then we're creating a, like a CSI type of course that we're working on that since now things are kind of open again, that we're going to create a, you know, CSI and do mock uh, crime investigations and teach intuitives how to work with that as well. Oh, that's pretty cool. Men in black. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. building men in black. Yeah, <laughs> um, oh, um, no, hey. my, my mic keeps going. You, you just got to turn the bottom of it. Yeah, just the bottom of it. Hold it with your hand. I was gonna hold it. <laughs> um, away from the questions, I know we've been asking a lot of questions and shit. Um, we're gonna move on to or well, bef before that, I kind of kind of wanted to ask you questions, but they were kind of funny. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> well, not funny questions. It's a fun segment, something new, and it's only because um, it's something new. Just fucking with. <laughs> I'll, go, um, I'll go with it. I don't, I don't know what's going on either, but. Um, Real quick, sure, yeah. Go ahead. I'll let you. I'll let you fix that real quick. Um, what's your name? Oh. Do one of you guys have a dad that's passed? You? I don't know if he's been over for quite some time. Are you guys related? No. Okay. I don't know what the reference is, but I have a dad figure that's coming through right off the bat. Like when I look over here, I just see a man standing here energetically. I don't see it physically. Um, do you mind? Yeah, go ahead. So here's the thing. Um, there's a man that's just very present. Um, even when I was talking with him, he was around you, Mike. So it's interesting that I just feel like there's a sense with him that he comes through. Um, there's also a reference with him that he's acknowledging that we need to talk about either March being significant, the month of March, either a birthday or death anniversary being connected here. It's, he, it's his birthday in March, and he okay. also okay. passed. Okay. No, no, no. Oh. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. As um, long as we can validate that, this might just be his way stepping forward and coming through. He's also recognizing for me, and I may misinterpret this, but I don't know if you had a close relationship with dad and regardless of what your relationship is, but he's making me feel like that when we talk about his physical well-being, I don't feel like this is a quick passing at all. Like he's showing me like um, tubes, like being in a hospital. And I feel like there's a sense that he wants to say that, I don't know if he was intubated or he couldn't talk, but he's saying he can talk now to you because he's saying my mijo, my mijo, my mijo. And I just look chills just running through my body. So I'm getting emotional too. Um, and I just feel like there's a sense that he wants to make sure that you know that he is safe and he's not in pain because when he comes through, 
um, he just wants to give you like a big bear hug. Like he wants to embrace you and wants to make sure that you know, not only that he's proud of you, but he wants to make sure that you know that he's proud of what you've done after he passed over because he's showing me there was a decision, if I'm not mistaken, that you guys had to like release him, like let him go. And as much as you wanted to hold on to your father, he's telling me to tell you and tell the family thank you for releasing him. And now I do need to acknowledge here, is there two Is there two other siblings or are you one of two siblings? I'm one of two. Okay. Is the other one female? Yeah. Can you tell her hello? Because I feel like it's important for dad to recognize her. Um, and he's also... Um, they're bringing up my mom, so anytime they bring up my mom, there's always two references. So I don't want you to answer until I tell you them. One, either the month of December is significant to either, say, mom, sister figure, or to you. If it's not that, then we need to acknowledge, like, say, like Margaret, Maria, Mary, that we need to acknowledge you're either still living or passed over. So what's the connection to either or? Um, Maria's my mom. Okay, that's my mom's name, Maria. So just know, can you send love to mom? I don't know if she's open to this work, but it's important to recognize his love because it's almost like an old love is what I'm saying because he's just showing me like a very spiritual like hand in hand for your mother and I also need to recognize um, what he's bringing up here and I could be mistaken they're showing me my grandfather who passed you know several years before my grandmother on my mom's side um, I feel like I might misinterpret this but did your dad have and I don't want to sound like so like cliche, but your dad still feels fairly young to me, like when he transitions, not like in his 40s or 30s, but still fairly young to me. But he's identifying as if he can physically walk on his own. So I don't know if he need a walker, he needed a wheelchair, he needed assistance, but he's saying that he can move his feet and he can walk again because I feel numbness going up through my legs. And he's also validating, did, by any chance, I'm not a doctor, not a physician, but did he suffer from like diabetes or like MRSA? Mercy, oh, okay. Diabetes. Okay, he's saying that he doesn't have that anymore. He's saying he can eat all the like pantuze, like all the bread, all the food that he can eat, <laughs> and not gain the weight. So I feel like that he wants to be very playful and joking around because I feel like your dad should have had a strict regimen, but he kind of threw that out the window. You know what I mean? So I feel like it this way, saying that he wants to kind of like joke around, but also he wants to take on accountability. It's not that he did not take care of himself. I just feel like that he kind of still did things that he shouldn't have done in every respectful way. And I just feel like that he wants to say like, I'm healthier than a horse now. So I know there's a sense of importance that he wants to validate here. Um, to Is your birthday coming up? Yes. Okay, happy birthday. Because he wants to acknowledge you, because he's sending me balloons, sending balloons, sending balloons. And I feel like there's a reference that he's identifying here um, that I may misinterpret this. Give me one second. Is there like a Vivian or uh, like a V name that we need to bring up here? Female? Yes. Who's that? Uh, my half sister. Okay. Veronica. Can, I don't know if you still talk with her. I don't know if dad was, if that's your dad or whatever that relationship is. I just feel like it's his way of recognizing her. But he's, even though she's half, he's still putting her together. So if I can say something respectfully, have you guys been separated then for a long time or are you guys separated now? Well, we didn't grow up together, okay. but we were kind of on and off. Okay. So I just feel like it's dad's way of recognizing that relationship when he brings it up here. And I feel like it's his way of saying, like, for you, I don't know what this means to you, but I feel like it's important to hear it. It's um, the word I want to use or, or the symbolism. It's like it's all water under the bridge. So I feel like it's, it's for you, though, to be accepting, which I feel like you have accepted your dad's passing. But I don't feel like that you have really grieved your dad's passing. So I feel like, remember how we talked about like letting go, it's difficult. I don't want you to let go of your dad, but let go of the emotions that make you angry, upset, because your dad is telling me to tell you that he never meant to leave the family. You know that, and he never meant to leave the family. So I know there's a sense of recognizing that you are the man, and he's proud of that. And I just want to reassure you that you have that support from him in such an amazing way that he wants to make sure that we kind of give you the guidance that you need. Um, because everyone wants their dad's guidance and their parents' guidance. But I feel like with your dad, he wants to make sure that we give you the guidance and that reassurance and that encouragement that we talked about, Mike, is that it's a sense of really knowing that dad is still very much with you. I also do need to acknowledge here, is, is February connected? Who's February? Why is February? Is it death, that death anniversary or wedding anniversary? Uh, death. Okay. 
Is that someone separate or to your dad? My dad. Okay. Anytime I see like roses or thorns, it represents like obviously my symbolism. Um, I don't know where he's going with this and I don't know if he's being funny or if he's being serious, <laughs> um, but I am going to give it to you. So just my perception of your dad, he doesn't feel like he was like a bad guy, a bad father or so on and so forth, which I can tell with certain relationships energetically. But I feel like there's a reference that he wants to bring up here. Well, there's going to be two of them. One of them I feel like is funny, but I feel like one is more serious. So during the time of your dad's transition, not the moment that he passed away, but he's like bringing you into like say hospice in the hospital. And I feel like there's a sense that he's bringing up here that your dad is saying that he was very much aware. So if your dad is trying to bring this up here, there might have been a, a sense that your dad was either on severe, like say morphine meds or two, he was in a vegetative state, like in a coma, dementia, like not dementia, but a coma. There's something neurological that makes me feel like that as if like it's fuzzy. So does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. What I do need to acknowledge here, during that time, I don't know what, it, give me one second. There's a conversation that you had with your dad that makes me feel like he was aware, but wasn't aware. But he wants to make sure that you understand that it's like you're, it's like you're doing the right job or you're doing the right thing. It's a sense of like taking over but in the sense of recognizing, like, I don't want you to go, but I want you to be okay. It's a very interesting concept how he brings this up here. D does that make sense? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. I, I don't, you don't need to tell me what it is. Whatever it is, keep it personal because it's none of my business. But I feel like your dad wants to validate that, that conversation or that moment that you had with him is very crucial. It's very important to him and to you. And who, who's, like, Who's like Robert or like the, or like Rudy or like an art, who's like the art name? That's uh, his name, Ruben. Ru Ruben, okay. okay. He has a brother named Rudy as well. Okay, so just know then, this is just your dad's way of supporting you and recognizing this in a very, very big way. And I just feel like if I can transfer what I'm feeling and just give it to you, Cisco, that feeling of love and gratitude from your father, like it, it, it's a beautiful feeling. And I feel like it's important for you to have that connection because I feel like it, it's, it's not just missing dad. It's, again, like a longing that we need to bring up here. Like, it, your dad could have passed a month ago. He could have passed five years ago. I don't need to know that. But what I can tell you, he's very much with you and the family. Very much with you. Um, and, and, again, the funny part, though, because your dad doesn't want to make you sad. You know your father better than I do. He does not want to make you sad, but he wants to make you laugh. Like, he wants to joke around. Like, there's more of a playful type of energy. But would there be a reference of how I'm being shown to it? Like, I'm looking at you and but looking past you but when he shows it to me there's a reference that i don't know if either you just came across this or say your mom or a sister or whatever may have given given you this but would there be a funny reference like say i don't know um you and your dad did like a twin day of dressing down together like there's like a there's a like an image that i feel like either maybe perhaps mom gave it to you or either that you have it. But to me, it's like, say, like, both of you guys are wearing the same shirt, the same outfit. There's more of that than I'm seeing. With What would be the reference? Um, well, my mom and some of my uncles say that we look alike. No, it's not that. It's something more um, tangible, like material, is what I'm seeing. It's not going to be a blanket. To me, it would feel like, say, like the shirt, the pants. There's something like that. It's not you guys looking alike. Hmm. It's not that. I know there's a family photo you have. Well, you and your dad in the silk shirts? Yeah, we used to. Yeah, I don't know if you guys had the same shirt. I, don't, I mean, I can remember. That's the only thing that comes to my mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, to be honest with okay, you. Okay, go back to that photo. So I don't know if this is then related to your mom or related to you, but this photo would obviously then, which you validated, Mike, has to be out. So if, it, if that is the case, that might be the photo that he's talking about. Like, he wants to tease you or make fun of you, like, as if, like, again, you're the man. Like, we're very similar. So the fact that you said that we look alike, I think it might be his way then reassuring that but he's teasing you about it. So if you guys thought you guys look like chingons or like look swap, <laughs> I feel like that he wants okay. to tease you in a very funny way. Because he always used to say that, he's like, this is where you're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, look in the mirror. When you look in this, look in the mirror. Okay, so. I, I want you to remember that. Remember that. Anytime you look in the mirror, your dad is with you. Remember that. A lot of love to you, man. Seriously. 
see that as your dad's way of expressing love and gratitude towards you, but also to the family, okay? Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah. Hey, goodbye, Ruben, if you're leaving. And, and, one, and one thing, did you, did you know him pretty well? Yeah. I know you guys said you guys were good friends. I find it quite interesting because when I was talking with you, the man was around you, and then he shifted over here, the energy. So I don't know if, like, in a very respectful way, if it's just his way, paying respect for you, because as if, like, not that I couldn't be there, but it's like, I want to make sure that he's okay, and he wants to say he's okay. So whatever happened here, he's okay with it. Like, he's not angry or upset. Just know that. Yeah. Now, trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm like waterworks are already over here. So I, I just try to hold, have to hold back my emotions because, again, as a medium, I don't want to lose the meaning of the message. So, When his dad passed away, my mom was in the hospital. And I told him I was going to go see him. He, he called me with, with his dad, Ruben, and he was all too dub. I, I think he was all drugged up, right? Yeah. And I said, hey, what's up, Ruben? I'm going to go see you, blah, blah, blah. And the, the weekend he passed, I was at the hospital, and I was going to go see him. And I didn't get a chance to go say what's up, because he oh. passed away. So I told him I felt bad for not saying goodbye. So I don't know. Hey, peace out, Ruben. Hey, you look, I have chills, and chills are always confirmation of love right back to you. He's not angry or upset. He's okay, and he understands that. So, you know, to know that, I hope that brings some peace to you, that he was well aware of what you were trying to do. And even though you couldn't physically do it, the soul knows. The soul knows. So um, don't think that he did not know or does not remember that conversation. But I think that's why he brought it up, was to help your heart heal today. Both of you guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Can't help, no? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, like, wiping my tears over here. Um, uh, so so how, do, how does that come about? How does that work? Because, I mean, we were sitting here for a while. How do you? It, it's just... Um, a feeling when it happens organically. And again, I, I always open up myself when I do any show, interview, podcast. And again, there might be moments, and there's been mo many moments where I have read for the camera guy or I read for the guy that's like announcing, like, okay, counting down the segments. I read for that guy that's in a control room, which I don't even see him. I'm just, again, it's a voice that I tap into. It's not the physical body. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people think I need to be in front of them, but it's also <clears throat> just the voice and a vibration. That's what I tap into. So for me, um, it might just be dad's way he's finding his opportunity to, to shine today. But uh, honestly, thank you because I think Cisco really needed that. You know, I, 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 I know, I know for a fact. Yeah, I mean, like, like you said, um, I knew the time was coming and I'm okay with him passing. Like anybody else, I always have those moments where what if, what if, what if, if right. I could have done something. But something you brought up is that we did have a conversation and I don't mm -hmm. know if you heard me or not. So that's something that I always carry with me, wanting to know 100%. if they could. 100%. That's a, you know, and that's even a great, you know, topic or conversation. When people are in a vegetative state of mind, altered state of mind, dementia, Alzheimer's, um, or, you know, on severe meds, talk to them. Talk to them. They're aware. They are very much aware. And even though if we don't, you know, get the a word back or a validation or movement from the physical body does not mean that they're not, you know, aware or, you know, because what happens is that when we're in that state of mind, we come and go, we enter the body, physical body, we come and go, the soul, the spirit. So your dad could have been coming and going during those times, kind of preparing you guys in a way saying like, it's time for me to fly. And I think that was his way. Again, whatever that conversation was, it's none of my business, but I want you to know that he was very much aware of that. So with any of us or whoever listens to the podcast or if any of, us, any of you guys out there ever lost a loved one that was in an ultra state of mind or that is in an ultra state of mind right now, talk to them. They are listening. They are aware. Cool. Well, that's a great message. Yeah. Then, uh, um, I think we're going to move on. I think we got to move on to uh, our... Uh, Let's brighten up the, the day. Let's yeah, get our no matches. No <laughs> um... I'll start it off if you guys want. Okay. Uh, and and uh, just an FYI, he's been throwing out, throwing it out that I'm gonna be all political today. I wasn't gonna be political today. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to go for it, go. No, for I'm it. not gonna be political. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna tie it into the whole medium and the paranormal and stuff like okay. that. Um, <laughs> obviously, that was an awesome experience for you. Uh, that was an awesome experience for me because, like I told you, I never got to say like I got a visit him. I always felt guilty. 
And we weren't that close, but we I might consider his dad to be, you know, one of the dads that knew me growing up. You know right. what I'm saying? We lived three houses down from each other. So oh, that's awesome. I was always like, hey, Cisco, Cisco. And, and I mean, I would go play poker or I would go gamble with his dad. That's I'd go at the cool. casinos. Sometimes when he wouldn't go, I'd go with his dad and we'd be at the, the slots. So anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> that was an awesome experience. So my no matches is, um, like I told you guys, I'm going to keep saying it again. I'm a pussy when it comes to gold. <laughs> I'm, I'm a fucking pussy. Like, not right now. I, that shit, honestly, I didn't feel scared. Good. Um, but this is my no matches, okay? If. If you're ever going to come back, and I'm, and I'm speaking to the other side right now, <laughs> if you're ever going to come back and say hi to us, or say what's up to us, please do it in the least scariest way fucking possible. Is there a least scary way? Though? Is, 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 is there, like they just pop up gradually? Well, don't, fucking, the hey, don't fucking turn on TVs and fucking start knocking on fucking uh, trastes. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Don't come at 3 in the morning. <laughs> like, don't fucking... Come in the middle it. of the day. Yeah, right. yeah, come in the middle of the day when, when I'm surrounded by people. Don't come at me when I'm asleep. And if I open my eyes, you're standing right there. Like, like. Don't have to pull your feet at night. Yeah, don't pull my feet at night. <laughs> but do you, know that, do you know that dreams are sometimes them coming? Yes. Even in, well, you're right. Yes. Even in dreams. But what I mean is, don't fucking scare us. Right? <laughs> you know, I, I, I want to see you if, 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 I, if I knew you and you want to appear to me. Fine. Otherwise, I don't want to see you. If I don't know you, don't fucking come to me. Because <laughs> I'm going to pass out. I'm not going to help you. I know that you probably need help. <laughs> you, I'm not going to be the one to help you. I'm going to be in the fucking floor. Back. Yeah. But anyways, if you do know me and you know I knew you and you want to come see me, fucking come in the middle of the day. <laughs> Preferably after I eat it so I don't fucking pass out. Right. So, so you just throw up instead. <laughs> Or take a shit on myself. Or I don't know. Anyways, that's my no matches. Now. So that my no matches is for the other side. <laughs> that's a good. One. That's a new one for me. Right. Like, uh, my no matches. You want me to go political? You want me to go whatever you want, bro. Whatever well, you want. obviously we all know the whole Roe versus Wade thing, right. and man, that's a big old thing. But mm -hmm. I'm trying to stay away from that right now, so we're being more positive, and I'm trying to keep it light. So the other day I was getting a massage. And you know how they put the like the music and the relaxing music, and you're just like relaxing, right? Wait, hold on. Which type of massage did you go to the? <laughs> <laughs> did you go to the Chinito places? Or was yeah, it like... yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. So, okay. so okay, so you know they have like the the music and the then lights. Yeah, so they have the lights and the music and so low, and then someone's cell phone just goes off and they put it on speaker and they start yelling oh, their conversation. And you're like, I'm I'm trying to like yeah, relax so here, yeah. and it's like really, and then they're like, oh, let me call you back. I'm in the massage place. They call back like two minutes later. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I'll call you back right now. I'm right here at the massage place, like, oh, <laughs> like just yelling the whole time. It's like, come on, that's a no mancha. You don't do that. Yeah, it's a no mancha. Yeah. I got a story about the massage place, but I'll finish. That. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, guys, not like that. I'll tell you guys. I'll tell you after this. I know. Right? <laughs> no, I got a story. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways. Um, no manches. My mine is uh God, um very simple, but it's it's truly one of the pet, you know one of those pet peeve things. It's uh shopping carts. Go in the grocery <laughs> store, uh, and just putting your cart back into the little cart thing. And there's people that you know you know that will park right next to it and just leave it right next to the car that's there and or put it in front of the car. Just walk it over. Just walk it over. You know. But like, then but then we take away from the. The carrito guys, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, now we're taking jobs away from them. You know what I'm saying? Nah, it, ha it happened to me on Saturday. I was at Vaughn's. I was buying dog food, and I have a truck, so it's a little higher. So I didn't see a shopping cart in front of me. Next thing you know, I just go forward. Boom! I just see a shopping cart oh, go right, like. Right, I'm like, damn! I'm like, really? Someone just leaves that thing? Hey, there's oh some stores that don't even have shopping carts, though. Like you that's go to true. some WalMarts, you I go know. in there, you're like, what the fuck with the shopping oh cart? There's people God. outside fighting for them. Oh shit! Like, what the there's fuck? an Instagram page that called Cart Narks. <laughs> yeah, they, they they literally record people and post people that don't oh put their cards God. back. Hey, that's a good one. Hey, don't put right. them on blast. Right, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know during the holidays, at least you know, uh, you know, the grocery stores, Vons or Stater Brothers, wherever. Man, there's no shopping carts, and people yeah. like, especially yeah, people like crazy. now, like yeah, people go crazy, yeah. like Easter or the holidays and all that stuff. Mm -mm. I try to do all my shopping before all that stuff. Yeah, was just a with long line. lines. With and COVID, imagine. Remember when COVID oh. was barely starting? Those lines at Costco. And oh yeah. Damn. Yep. 
That's fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you guys want to hear my funny story? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it has nothing to do with... No, no, no. I mean, kind of, but Ra- not really. Rated R or PG-13? Wait, wait. It's about maybe uh, 17. 17. I <laughs> so, I like to get massages, too, because um, I have a bad back. And I like the, the very hard massages and shit. And my wife... She tries to give me massages, but they're very soft and it's just it's <laughs> And I want like fucking like, deep deep into my tissue, right? Um, obviously there's places like what is it, Massage Envy or those high end yeah, places, yeah. but they're fucking expensive. So it's like fuck that. I'm gonna go to a, the little Chinito place where they have the red lights. <laughs> they, they have they have the little walls that just divide the little areas or whatever. And so one day, I went in there and I said I want a full body massage. Okay, how how long? I think it was 45 minutes. Whatever. I go in there. Now, I, I lived in Japan. I was in the military. Oh, wow. So I lived in Japan for two years. The massages over there are different than the massages here, okay? What? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm sitting here, and I told my wife, I, like, I, got, my, I got a bad back. I'm going to go to the massage place. And I'm there. And they start off with my back. Boom. I'm in underwear. Fuck face down. And then, like, 30 minutes later, the, the lady goes, turn up. Turn upside. And I'm like, my memories of Japan are coming to me. And I'm like, wait a minute, what the fuck? What were you doing in Japan, first of all? I was in the military. What memories? Right. Oh, no. I'm right. <laughs> hey, in Japan, they, got, they, they have happy ending fucking massages, okay? Oh, shoot. So, anyways, uh, she tells me to turn up. And mind you, yesterday, gordito. And, and I'm like, <laughs> Why? Like, I, I, oh no, she doesn't speak English. She doesn't speak English, so I'm just like, oh no, 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 just massage. And she's like looking at me like, yeah, massage. And I'm like, why the fuck do I gotta take my underwear off? You know what I'm saying? I, I couldn't understand. So I felt bad because I was tell, basically telling her that I didn't want to get my dick sucked. I just wanted, I just wanted a regular massage. And my wife was like, what did she do? She was I don't know. She just looked at me weird the whole night. And I was like, what the fuck? Because I told my wife about it. She thought it was fucking funny. Oh, my Anyways, gosh. I thought she was fucking prostituting herself, too. And I told her, no, I'm not down with that. And yeah, it's embarrassing. Yeah, that was embarrassing, funny. embarrassing. Oh, man. Yeah, that is anyway. me. <laughs> All right. Um, our last segment, we're uh-huh. going to finish up. I wish we could continue with you. You've been amazing. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Probably one of my favorite guests. The top one, two. <laughs> because oh. one, two. one two well you're not and no, 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 not to not to disregard our other guests because I love every guest that we've had every guest that we had has fucking been amazing but the paranormal has always attracted me like, like it's like fuck even know, though you're like, scared of it you know I'm scared of it and so just the fact that that wonderful experience that we had right now yeah. especially with your dad to me it's like fuck like not to again not to diminish what we've had with our, our previous guests because Every guest we've had, been amazing. But the paranormal has always been one of those things where it's like, holy shit. And so, um, thank you. And, 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 and I wish we could fucking continue or have you again in the future. Absolutely. Let me know. I'm right down the street. Cool, cool. Yeah. And Appreciate so we, that. We want to finish off with uh, words of wisdom. Um, words of wisdom is basically something that we ask our guests to say so that uh, people that are listening to the podcast or your listeners, our listeners, uh, they know what you live by, you know, any words of wisdom that they can use in their life. Right. So um, that's our next segment, words of wisdom. And it's probably, like I said, I've always said this, but it's everybody's favorite. It's one of our top viewed uh, segments. So Awesome. So uh, want we go? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> so uh, my words of wisdom is uh, do what you love. And uh, if you do what you love, it's not considered work at all. So the way that came about was from my fifth grade teacher. And, uh, you know, they call it like a promotion when you get out of elementary, you go to junior high school. And she gave me, her name is Miss Mew, her first name is Donna Mew. Um, You know, and she lives actually in Covina. And she gave me these cards that said, do what you love. And my passion back then was doing artwork, pencil, painting, all that stuff. I'm a great artist, but I haven't got into it. But I saw it was do what you love was being who I was and doing my mediumship and helping people because I knew I wanted to help people. I wanted to be in law enforcement. I wanted to be a firefighter, but I ended up helping out. Now I'm helping out people in a completely different way through healing the soul. So for me, what I do is never work. It's what I love to do. Dope. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. I think we need to do that more. We need to yeah. definitely like follow our passions. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. Uh, you start doing things that 
sometimes you do it because the money you need the money. You know what I'm saying? But so what you love sometimes doesn't pay you as much as right. as what other jobs pay you. So I think it's kind of hard. Yeah. But right. you're right. It's all about being happy with with what you do. And it's never right. too late. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Those are my yeah. words of wisdom. It's never too late, yeah. you know, to find your passion or hundred percent venture out. But hundred percent. Yeah. So you you say you're not on social media a lot, but can you tell us where people can find you, where they can look you up, any shows you got coming up? I know you just did one last week, this past week, right? Uh, <laughs> okay. I saw you did the thing with Momo, right? The the comedy yeah, show. The, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Oh yeah, we that did, was last we week. Did yeah. The, uh, last yeah, last week. Forgive me. I'm like trying to think. Yeah, <laughs> that was uh, at the Stand Up Comedy Club, uh, where I do we doing uh, comedy and live readings. But I also do my own events. Um, I do online events for people that are not local or they can't travel or there's disabilities, so they can still hop on Zoom. There's not a difference of getting a reading that way. It's either done virtually. It's not guaranteed a reading, which is why tickets are like pocket friendly. Um, same thing with live in person events. They're they're pocket friendly. But I'll probably be traveling to. San Diego County, uh, back to LA County, uh, uh, Orange County, and then hopefully San Antonio, Chicago, Portland, Seattle, and New York, going back out there, start doing some shows again. But, you know, with this whole COVID thing, it's been difficult. But, you know, social medias, uh, Instagram, it's just AJ underscore Barrera. Same thing, uh, my Facebook, Psychic Medium AJ Barrera, TikTok, AJ underscore Barrera. And I just do some fun stuff on those as well. Like I do Instagram lives where I'll take questions and do some readings for people. Um, just ha have some fun with them, bridge that connection. It's amazing to, to get to know your community because a lot of people don't get to know them, their community. So yeah. when I get to interact with them and, and do readings and take questions, um, again, it's, it's what I love to do. And especially when I have the time to do it, it, it it's, it's a fun thing. So, nice. yes. Thanks. Well, you guys, you guys know where to find them? Yeah. Um, I really, really, um, uh, Suggest you look into his stuff. Yeah, and he's a busy man. I know your assi your assistant said you were booked till like December. So <laughs> yeah, I think we're already moving into January. Oh wow, uh, of doing private readings. So um, you know, s you know, all the information for events. If you can't get a reading or you don't don't want to do a reading again, you just go to an online event or or in person event. Event they're pocket friendly, and you just go to my website at ajbarrera.com or just Google it. That sounds like Barrera or Barrera. You know, it just depends. Um, <laughs> Marco Polo Barrera. Who doesn't know Marco Polo Barrera, right? Yeah. So just look it up, and you can find all the information. I'm pretty easy to find. Are so. you highly requested during Halloween? Huh? Are you like very busy oh, during Halloween? Yeah, radio stations, TV shows, <laughs> like probably the most. Gotcha. Yeah, most requested for sure. And cool. then during the holidays. You know, people are missing their loved ones, so sometimes no. they'll talk, have me talk about grief or, you know, healing the heart and so stuff like that around Thanksgiving and, and Christmas or those special memories, for sure. Gotcha. Nice. Well, thank you again. Yeah. Well, thank you guys um, for having me on. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Had a good time. Had some good laughs. Uh, we all got some healing. We all got yeah. some uh, positive feedback today, for sure. Yeah. And hopefully this goes to your listeners and they can watch it or hear it and, you know, really t take something away from it, you know, because what I do, I'm just planting a seed and hopefully that seed allows it to grow basically cool. nice that's a good message yeah. thank you once again uh we appreciate you coming out on sunday um i really to be honest with you i wasn't expecting you to give me a reading like i told him <laughs> i was just gonna you know i'm just gonna like if he does you know it, yeah, uh, do we, have we, we didn't want to bring anything up that's why i asked you if you felt anything coming in mm. okay because we supposedly there's a somebody an old man that what we that's what we think that <laughs> walks up and down the stairs and so i was like well maybe he'll feel something and he'll let us know I told him it's nothing bad. <laughs> he doesn't yeah, believe me. It could me. be your dad, honestly. Just let you know that he's around you. But uh, especially in, in stairways and hallways, um, use some Palo Santo because what happens in um, stairways or hallways in your home, work environment, energy collects. Stuck. So you want to use Palo Santo to clear out the energy and just do a prayer or say something out there and the energy will start clearing up. I don't think the energy will go away because I really believe it might be a spirit guide, one of your loved ones or maybe an employee's loved ones, but it could be your dad's way. Just let you know he's, again, very much around you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. And Thank you, guys. Hope you have a great Sunday, guys. See you guys <laughs> yeah. next time. Thank you. Bye.